Sinners and Saints, it's TJ here. Today I'd like to talk to you a bit about what we call the second child syndrome. The second child syndrome is something that uh, I heard about uh, and talked about in college when I was studying uh, some psychology. The second child syndrome is uh, what happens to a baby that is born uh, or second born into a family. They have a special place in the hierarchy of things. So I'd like to talk to you a bit about it because uh, that's uh, the topic for our, our uh, gospel lesson for this Sunday coming up. So uh, listen up. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, and I bring you his love. Amen. The story of the prodigal son is about a man who uh, gave his son his inheritance, and the boy went away from home and quickly squandered all of the inheritance and ended up on a pig farm feeding pigs, but uh, couldn't get anything to eat himself and finally had to end up to return home in shame and uh, was, a, was finally accepted by his father. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that falls to me. And he divided his living between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took his journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in loose living. And when he had spent everything, a great famine arose in that country, and he began to be in want. So he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he would gladly have fed on the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he thought to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned again against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. While he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and make merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found. And they began to have a party. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what this meant. And 
he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Yo, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your living with prostitutes, you killed for him the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to have a party and be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. cars I ever had was a 1966 Mustang. Now many of you know the, some of the history of the Mustang. The Mustang was an automobile that came out, I believe the first one was made in 1964 and it came out with a 170 cubic inch uh, six cylinder engine, inline six. And later the following year they increased the cubic inch size to 200 cubic inches. Also, they uh, quickly came out with the 260 V8 and then the 289. The 289 is the one I had and it was a 225 horsepower hydraulic lifters and a four barrel carburetor. The big guy was the uh, 271 horsepower version, which uh, was a larger, I think, four barrel and uh, solid lifters. They would really wind up. My brother-in-law had one uh, that he picked up, a sedan that w had uh, a custom aftermarket setup of uh, four two-barrel carburetors. It was quite a whaler. <laughs> The Mustang has kept growing in size and cubic inch displacement and uh, ended up uh, oh, about 1973 with a completely different body style and things all could evolved all the way up to what they call the Boss 429. Big engine, over 400 horsepower. Then the bottom fell out, just like that prodigal son turned into some pigs. Yeah, I hate to uh, offend some people that may own them, but uh, Mustang too wasn't near the car that the former cars were. That Mustang two dropped down. Uh, you can get them in a four cylinder and uh, a, uh, I don't know if they had a V6, but uh, eventually they ended up with a, I think a Shelby version which was a 302 cubic inch V8 was planted in them and uh, they were they were pretty good performing but they were still not the car that they were formerly. Well eventually the fuel economy and air pollution crunch got to break. It got a break because of uh, the advent of fuel injection. Fuel injection came along and eliminated the carburetor. Engine performance got better and uh, the Mustang grew in size, got a little bit bigger as it was before. And now uh, comes out with that 302, which is uh, got some awesome power to it. So there's a story of redemption in the history of the Mustang. You know, uh, things can fall apart for us. And uh, we carry within ourselves a sinfulness that uh, we've had all along, just like that uh, early Mustang was a polluter. 
and uh, carburation just didn't do the job even though that some manufacturers tried to clean it up with uh, all kinds of EGRs and different uh, control valves. Uh, it just didn't quite make it. It's kind of like us trying to clean ourselves up. Well, there's only one way we can be cleaned up. We can only be cleaned up by coming to Jesus Christ and claiming that gift that he provided for us. You see, when we uh, get all done with things, all our races are over, we come before God and we have to uh, have our sins pardoned. And we can't do that on our own account because we're sinful. But we can do it through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, he went to the cross to pay the penalty for our sinfulness. He finished the drag strip and won the trophy. Was resurrected from the dead and sits on the right hand of God. So uh, when we get there and we surely are sinners, he pleads our case and says, well, hey, this is the one I died for. This is the one I paid the penalty for. And we are saved by grace through faith, given to us in Jesus Christ and not by the things that we've done. So think about that as you go through life today. Next time you see a Mustang, whether it be one of the original Mustang 2 Plus 2 Fastbacks like I had, or whether it be one of these new Mustangs that uh, got all that power. Think about that and talk to your car club members about what it means to be a believer in Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>